Oh, do you know, what is wrong with people? I mean, there's bins all over the place. Mm. I ate little bugs. Yeah, it was half kebab and an empty old bongo carton this morning. Ugh. It was a sold nappy and a single flip-flop on New Year's morning. I mean, who wears flip-flops in December? Oh, string them up, that's what I say. Yeah, me too. <laughs> See ya. See ya. Any joy? No, we tried the shelters and the hospitals, but nothing. No bodies found. Tim, Faye's inside. I mean, don't you think you're being a bit OTT? What we're feeling, bearing a grudge, I don't think so, though. Right, best get back and get a shower for Mum's sentencing. You get a shower here if you want. Oh, no, Faye's using it. Or Rosie or so somebody. <laughs> it's no worries, I'll shower later on. I've got a meeting now, anyway. But I'll see at the court. Do you know, our bathroom's already like Piccadilly Station without you inviting all and sundry to hose themselves down. Yeah, but what if feelings caught up with Seb? Tim, will you stop being so melodramatic? We don't even go hinting that anything's wrong with Seb. Not in front of Faye. That poor girl suffered enough. Quite a... <laughs> Five years. Well, it could be two and a half years with good behaviour. Oh, yeah, like that's any better. I know it's hard. Well, you're all right. You've got a life. I've got nothing. No mum, no boyfriend. How can Seb still not be in touch? Have you tried telephoning him? Of course I've tried phoning him. What kind of idiot are you? Faye, look, I know you're upset, love. Oh, worked but... that one out yourself, did you? I'm so sorry, Rory. Perfectly all right. I'll just let her cry it out. All right, I need to get home and sort these visiting orders out. I'll come back. So what are we going to do about Seb, then? Well, what else can we do? We've looked everywhere. Let's just concentrate on Faye for now, eh? She needs us like never before. She's still crying. No. You're going to be all right with her, cos I'm opening a tattoo parlour at three. A tattoo parlour, eh? I thought it was all swimming baths in all people's homes. Oh, it's all part of the council's new inclusivity drive. We'll be opening crack den soon. Well, that'll go down well in your three-pointed out and your big robe. <sighs> all right, mate. So, apparently you've got to do these visiting orders online, so I thought I could ask Faye to help me fill them out. Oh, good idea. That'll give us something practical to do. Faye, your brother's here. Yeah, and just to make things worse, Nicholas turned up again. Are you joking? Oh, I thought she'd come for good. Yeah, I just saw her before, old pally pally with her dad like nothing's happened. Hey, so listen, I've just downloaded these visiting orders, but you know what I'm like with form, so I thought you could help me fill them out, please. You're all blessed. So you okay? It's not just Mum. It's living opposite him. Yeah, well, now that Mum's in prison, I don't think we'll have to worry much about him anymore. Yeah, but what if he comes after me next? It won't, cos I'll protect you. I promise. No phones at the table, Faye. You know the rules. What, so you're saying that if a terrible virus hit Weatherfield, none of us would be allowed to check our news? OK, well... It's a plague. You have my permission to pick up your phone, but otherwise, there's no phones at the table. You're gonna crack that screen. You really think that's my biggest worry? Uh, uh, just take it easy, you and eat your lamb burger. I don't even like lamb. Can I go to my room? Yeah. You could have asked her what she wanted for her tea today of all days. Tim, this morning I've had my photograph taken in a caravan park. This afternoon it was in a tattoo parlour. Why didn't you make the tea? All right, all right. Sorry that she spoke to you like that. Look, I feel for her. I really do. But if she's going to be stopping here, you need to do more of your fair share. I really thought this would be my time now. You know, the girls grown up, independent. They'd be inviting me round to their house for my tea. I know. Not only have my two not gone, I've gained another one. Oh, so it's all right for Gina to come and live here, is it? Well, Gina is not an unhappy teenager, Tim, is she? No, she's ten times worse. Look, none of us saw this coming, Sally, did we? We all appreciate everything that you do. Mm, the washing machine's permanently on. The conservatory's like a laundry, and I can't sit in the bath for five minutes without somebody knocking on the door needing a wee. Not me. I know how much you love your bath. That's why I always go outside. Sorry, I sound like a right cow, don't I? Should we share that burger? Yeah. I'll make her an omelette later. Mm. 
And are you feel the ones come? come with us? Oh, you're being silly. Well, I'd rather be silly and still breathing. Don't be so dramatic. Dramatic? A bloke's dead, Sally. Don't get any more dramatic than that. I'll uh, wait outside. Yeah, all right, then. Look, Luke died because there's some evil people in the world. Yeah, there's one of them that lives across the street. Well, that feeling might be dodgy, but he's no murderer. All right, try selling that to Luke. Listen, I'm going and I'm going to take Faye with me. It's up to you if you want to come. At my... She's not really a kid, is she? Come on, you've had the mother. Don't tell me you haven't been tempted to do this. <laughs> 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 leave it, leave it. Leave it. Oh, no, Gary, leave it. He's not worth it. <laughs> I'm never discussing football with you again. Oh, talk about touchy, love. What's going on? A kid, he could start a fight in an empty room. What are you doing back here? Oh, I was going to wonder where you were. Did you go home? When I finish this. Hey, been looking everywhere for you. What's that? I had a good morning on the stall. <laughs> Do you want a drink? Oh, uh, yeah, I'll the same again. Well, you could be most pleased with me. I'm sorry, it was just there was nearly a fight. Gary Windass went with Pat Phelan. Oh, I thought Bob the Builder was a nutcase. Yeah, well, like I said to Tim, don't believe everything you hear. Not that it does any good. Honestly, you know, sometimes I think Tim's losing the plot. Oh, hello. What happened to buy Sally? See you at home. What are you doing? Packing a bag for me and Faye. What, are you going to your dad's right this minute? I'm not staying here, Sal, so neither is she. But this is your home. It's our home. No, Sally, your home's where you feel relaxed and safe. What, are you going to let Pat Phelan drive you away? I know you don't believe me, Sal, because I heard you and Gina talking about it in the pub and about how you think I'm losing the plot. Oh, well, I mean, do you blame me? And what about Faye? Don't you think she's had enough upheaval in her life already? I'm doing this to protect Faye. You're blowing this out of all proportion. I know that I'm right, Sal. You need to make up your mind and quick. What, you want me to sell up? Leave my family and my friends and my home just because you're worried about something that might never happen? I'm not going to do that. And what about everything that I've done for you? I'll call you. Lock the door when I've gone. So is this a permanent thing, Tim, us living in different houses, not seeing each other? Until something changes, yeah. Unless you want to come and live at my dad's with us. But Tim, I need you here. What with Gina kicking off and everything? Faye's my priority, so. Please don't have another row. We're not rowing, love. I'm trying to get your dad to see sense. I mean, your friends are here. Your work's here, everything. I'm not going to live on the same street as Pat Phelan. But you have done for such a long time. What has changed? Because he's framed Anna and he might have murdered Michael and Luke. Well, he could have murdered Seb. Yeah, and the only way to keep her safe is to get her out of here. I've got no choice. So I'm giving Steve first dibs. What? I thought we could use the money to help move away. Tim, I gave you that as a wedding present. Yeah, I know you did, Sam. Well, didn't you think about talking to me first? Well, Faye's my priority. Yeah, and the rest of us can just take a running jump. Uh, no. You know, I'm trying to understand you, Tim, but how can I when you don't even talk to me? <sighs> That's June. I'm going to have to go. Oh, I'm sorry. See, well, I'm sorry. Sal? Thanks for coming. I wasn't sure if you would. Shouldn't you be in some sort of committee meeting? I told them I wasn't feeling very well. What, well, you threw a sickie? Not that I'd be up to much at the moment. How do you mean? Well, I've been pretending that I'm coping, haven't I? But I'm not. The thing is, I don't think you understand how hard this is for me. I mean, everything that's ever mattered in my life has happened here. Including meeting you. I mean, not in this house, but on this street. Yeah, I know that. And losing all that will be like a part of me is dying. Oh, God, I promised myself I wasn't going to do this. Oh, come on, so listen No, to let me finish. I didn't ask you to come here to persuade you to stay. Didn't you? No, I mean, it's... Even if I wanted to, it's too late for that now. And I've made up my mind. I've decided I'm going to come with you. 
can't believe you even Gary was. What's this? Some sort of reverse psychology? What? Humoring me so that'll change my mind halfway down the road. Of course it's not. This is the hardest decision I've ever had to make. Well, you just got through saying how much your life is here. Was here. Now it's with you, and if that means moving somewhere else, then so be it. Obviously, I'm going to need some time to resign as the mayor. Well, I can't ask you to do that, Sal. You're not. This is what I want. What about Sophie and Rosie? Well, hopefully they'll come with us, but if not, we'll deal with that when the time comes. Well, Gina, then, surely this will tip her over the edge, won't it? I'm not moving to the other end of the country, am I? Look, I'm not saying this is going to be easy for any of us, but I'll find a way through it. Because I've got you. <laughs> don't know what to say. And don't say anything. I've got me working so hard. I've got like an hour for my lunch. Oh, hi, Tim. Hi, Tim. I didn't know you was back. How's Faye? Yeah, she's fine. Listen, girls, come and sit down. Oh, God, you've got your serious face on. Well, you're not getting a divorce. I can't be from a broken home again. Oh, Rosie, shut up. Calm down, Rosie. In fact, it's actually the opposite. <clears throat> We're getting back together. Oh, yeah, that's all right. As far as stepdad's go. Tim's good. I mean, you do eat like a slob, and I've got questionable taste in shirts, but your heart is massive. But that's not all. You're not having a baby. Rosie, please, let me finish. Oh. We're going to be making changes. Big changes. Right. We've decided to move out. Well, where to? Outside of Weatherfield. It's what we both want. Well, Mum, what about us two? Well, you're very welcome to come with us. Well, no, no, I can't. I can't move. What about my job? I'm a highly skilled PA. Jobs like mine are very competitive. And Sophie, we thought you might want to come with us. Yeah, you can help us choose a new house. Why would you think that? Well, you never lived on your own before. I mean, you're not really up to it, are you? And it's expensive. Come on, I've not moved out because yous have always been around. If you're not going to be here, I'm going to branch out, aren't I? I live with someone my own age. Mum, I don't know why you look so worried. It'll be fine. Well, no matter what happens or wherever we go, we're always going to be there for you. Listen, I'm right. I've had visits to the pub that have lasted longer than your move. Yes, all right. Thanks, Tim. So, come on, Soph, what did happen? Oh, not you at all. Cos you can be very outspoken. Mum, it's got nothing to do with me. I moved out because... I didn't like moving into Luke's old room. Oh, you poor thing. I mean, of course you wouldn't. So what did Kate say about you moving out? Kate was fine with it. Oh, well, never mind. How about I treat us all to a nice lunch, eh? Yeah, thanks. What about this one? Yeah, just having a few bottles of wine and some nibbles. Well, Tim loves a nibble, don't you? Especially them twiglets. It's not really a party, more just to get together for our friends. Friends? You are joking, aren't you? Sorry, Eileen. We can't make it. We're having a dinner party. Yeah, of course you are. She's deluded if she thinks we want to spend time with her husband. Yeah, well, it was obvious she was both lying. Well, what does she expect? Anyway, where were we before we were so rudely interrupted? Oh, I know. Don't hide your light under a bushel, Sophie. That was it. It's a biblical term, Sophie. You should be all over that. I know where it is. I'm just not hiding anything anywhere. You know, Kate is very lucky to have you. And if you don't move in with her, maybe she could move in with us when we move to pastures new. No, it's not going to work. Thanks, but no thanks. Well, I understand that you don't want to move into Luke's room. You've always been a very sensitive soul. You take after me. I remember when Pingu's dad ran over Pingu's dolly. You were inconsolable. Look, I've not been totally honest with you. About what? Kate's changed her mind. Said that things was moving a bit too fast. I'm sorry, Mum. I just felt stupid. Who moves in with a girlfriend and then moves back out after a couple of hours? Well, when I was 20, I was supposed to be moving in with my girlfriend, Shazza, but when I got there, she'd moved to a teepee in Clandon North. 
It's not that she says that she wants things to move slow, but I want the opposite, Mum. I think I'm really falling for her. You sure you're doing the right thing? I mean, talk about taking the... It really gets my goat, you know. Oh, people are always putting a cheeky off. I just bat it right back at them. It's been my life, that cab office. <laughs> I'll tell him to double it, then he might stand a chance. No, oh, yeah, cos that chair alone's worth a few bob in it. Yeah, and that biscuit barrel, well, that's an heirloom, that is. You two will be laughing on the other side of your faces when you see that I'm rolling in it and living it up. When we're rolling in it. So, come on, Sophie, what are you going to do with the rest of your life? I don't know, Mum. I had trouble picking out a top this morning. Yeah, life would be a lot easier if we all wore uniforms and dressed the same way, wouldn't it? Cos the world is your oyster. You could do anything with that entrepreneurial spirit of yours. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, think big. Sky's the limit. Look, whatever I'm gonna be, I want to make Kate proud. I want to be something more exciting than a window cleaner. Sophie, she's a waitress. She's not a flipping brain surgeon. Who's she to criticise you? No, she's not criticising me, Mum. This is me looking in on my life and realising, actually, yeah, it's a total mess. Oh, I don't like seeing you feel like this. You need to talk to her. Tell her how you feel. I can't do that. Do you know what? You are such a catch, Sophie. You really are. I mean, you're funny and you're kind and you've got a fantastic little figure. Hasn't she got a lovely figure, Tim? And, and that fringe, it really, really frames your little face. Lovely. Why don't you invite her round for a tea tomorrow? No, Mum, I don't want to do that. Yeah, well, we told Eileen we're going to have a dinner party, and that's what we'll do. What, are you scared she might check up on us? Well, you never know. One day we might be Kate's in-laws. It's about time she got to know us properly, isn't it? This angle, because you get a really good sense of space from here. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, how long is going to take, love? Well, with any luck, this will be it. I need to get a wiggle on with the dinner. What are we having, by the way? Oh, I'm glad you asked me that, Rosie. We're having beef stroganoff. Is that like a curry? Only I want to make sure that Imran likes it. Imran? Oh, did not say. I'm inviting him as my significant other. I didn't know you two were an item. Yeah, well, technically, it's work in progress. Well, it's about time you went out with a lawyer that wasn't Adam Barlow. Mm. Hello! <laughs> oh. Interruption, Emma. Why would it stop if you were? Uh, we've got the estate agent just taking pictures. Still going through with it, then? Uh, yeah. So is there any particular reason why you decided to drop by? Uh, yes. Uh, we can't make it tonight. We're double booked. Gina, double booked with who? Well, Arlene's invited us to her knees up. <laughs> mm. Comes to something, doesn't it, when your own family would rather spend time with Pat Phelan? Are you sure that's a good idea? I mean, you're still recovering from that episode. I think what Mum is trying to get at is, what was if you get mortal and go loco again? Though, obviously, mental health isn't like that. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm not going to drink. I won't. Oh, that's such a shame. I was looking forward to us all being together. Might not get another chance. Every cloud, eh? I was just hoping to grab a quick word with Sophie before everyone got here. Yeah, of course you can. You can come out now, love. It's only Kate. Oh, hi, Kate. She was hiding because she thought you might be Imran. Uh, is Sophie about? Uh, she's just having a bath, but she won't be long. Do you know what? It's fine. I'll come back later. No, don't be daft. You're here now. You can test drive some of my canapes. <sighs> These are little tartlets stuffed with caramelised carrot chutney and ricotta. <clears throat> Delicious. Oh, it'd be lovely seeing our girls with their other halves. Well, Rosie's not even going out with Imran yet. No, but when she sees Sophie and Kate all loved up, might give her the push she needs. Right, I'm gonna nip out and get some beer. But I've got wine for the stroganoff. You're joking, aren't you? I'd rather drink Lou Cleaner. Well, you're gonna have to, because you're not going anywhere. We've got guests coming. Now, I'm gonna go and finish getting ready, and you can pour Kate a nice glass of wine. you to a caramelised carrot and ricotta canapé. Oh, don't worry. She made sure there was no pork or prawns in them because of your religion and everything. No, I'm not exactly a strict Muslim, much to my mother's eternal shame. I bet your mother's very proud of you. So, you got something you do. Um, can I just say what a great home you've got? Oh, this old place. We stuck it on the market today. You can make us an offer if you want. Imran's not going to be interested in somewhere like this. Well, thank you, but Imran might be thinking about settling down or starting a family. Mom, are you OK? Actually, can we have a quick word? Okay. 
Now, before we all sit down, can I just say a few words? As you're probably aware, Sophie has hung up a squidgy and decided to sell a window cleaning business. And, well, I'd just like to take this opportunity to say how very proud we are of you. And you've got a very bright future ahead of you. Both of you have. Yeah, to Sophie and Kate. I'm intrigued. What's brought all this on? Oh, nothing. It's just about time I started thinking a bit more long term. You should sit with this one. She's a keeper. Mm, there'll be wedding bells next. Can we have that quick word now? Yeah, no. Sorry, everyone. Oh, sorry. Sorry. So, if you're right. Yeah, I'm fine. Are you sure? Yeah. So, can we start now or what? Where's, um, um, Kate has just split up with me. Oh, oh no. She never. Yeah, um, but I am, I'm fine. Oh, Sophie. Well, I said I'm fine. That's awful. Mm -hmm. What, you think she was just sat there waiting to dump her? Maybe. But Mum may be strong enough. Yeah, and that's a fiddly thing to cook. Oh, I'm gonna see her. No, 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 maybe you should just leave her with her mum from now on, eh? I just didn't see that coming. Mm. They were such a cute couple. I didn't think he's gonna go through with it. Right, it's like it never happened. Did you get the vomit off the patio? No, the rain will see to that one, love. We managed to get all that concrete dust she trailed up the stairs. Oh, I should have let him sink, shouldn't I? You know, you deserve an award. Here we are trying to get away from him and you go and save his life. You did the right thing. <sighs> oh, isn't it a shame it can't always look like this? Well, it can. Not with you around, it can't. When was the last time you did any cleaning or put anything away? I cleaned up after my cereal this morning. Yeah, only because I told you to. How many people have we got today? We've got three viewings, so I don't want anybody to touch anything. And if you need the toilet, you can go to the Rovers. What? You definitely selling your van, then? Well, why wouldn't I be? Oh, shh. It's the estate agent. Whoa. Hello? Yeah, speaking. Uh, yeah, I'm sure we can squeeze another person in. Sorry, the call what? Mrs. Connor, not... not Carla Connor. Yeah, she does know me. Is she interested? Carla Connor? Well, that's great. Thank you for letting me know. Carla Connor wants to view our house, eh? <sighs> Carla Connor. Lunch. Die for her. And she loved the walk-in wardrobes and the colour scheme in the bathroom. But she said she won't be able to keep it as clean as I do. Do you think she'll put an offer in? Oh, between you and me, Rosie, I mean, definitely. I mean, I said to her, I said, Carla, it's very important who I sell my house to, but with you, I know it'd be in safe hands. Did you actually say that to her? Well, it's true. I mean, I'm not going to sell it to a landlord who's just going to fill it with students and nurses. Or student nurses. This is a family home. It needs to be cared for and loved. And nobody could love it more than Carla Connor. We should ring the estate agent, see if they've had any feedback. Oh, you should have seen the faces when they saw the little chocolates on the pillows. Yeah, Mum, what was that about? I ate one. Oh, I thought one was missing. That's what you're supposed to do, you know, if you've got guests staying, because I read about it in Interior World. Have you heard? Carla Connor was mad for it. She loved the interior and the walk-in wardrobes and the little chocolates and the pillows. Yeah, I think we've got a buyer. I'm going to ring the estate agent. Carla doesn't want to buy the house. And if it's anywhere near the asking price, I think we should accept it, because nobody takes you seriously, you know, unless you've got a buy. What? Well, she didn't like it. Who told you that? I think you better sit down, love. Four viewings, well, three as it turned out, and those that are genuinely interested are on the way. And that is the last I want to hear of it. Mum has worked for her for years. How could she? Well, some people get carried away, don't they? It's like one day when my mate was building his extension, we all piled round after the pub. And when he fell asleep, we took it down brick by brick. When he woke up, it was gone. Two months' work down the Swanee. You're taking time off to do that, and all. So what happened? Never spoke to us again, and I think his wife left him. Oh, that's the most terrible thing I've ever heard. I know, but it was funny. <laughs> I, I mean, at the time. Well, this isn't. Yeah, no, it's completely different, but she's probably just carried away, hasn't she? Oh, you're all right, Mum. I'm going to go and see her. 
Was she in the Rovers, did you say? Oh, Mum, I really wouldn't bother. No, I'm too angry. Yeah, but what good is going to come out of it? You're going to have it out with her, then everyone's going to know what's happened. Just rise above it. Be the bigger person. That'll be the second viewing. I mean, first. Right, come on, Mum. Game face. Forget about Carla. <sighs> yeah, you're right. Tim, you go and get it. But, but, but I thought you wanted to... No, no, I want you to stay here and help. I've got nothing to be ashamed of. Let's see if we can ship out of here and move somewhere more civilised. Well, I told Steve that I'd give him an extra hour this afternoon because we're two drivers down. Well, I don't want you to be any longer. I won't, I won't. <sighs> well, that couldn't have gone any better. I think we might have sold it. Yeah, they were lovely. Well, what did I tell you? How important it is, who you sell your house to? And then with a baby on the way... Have you ever considered a job as an estate agent, love? I have, actually. Yeah, Mum, you're a natural. Oh, I'd love it. You know, snooping round people's houses, it'd be like through the keyhole. Right, I think I might just uh, pop oh, out. who's that now? Oh, I'll get it. Hiya, Rosie. Is your mother in? Um, yeah, sure. Cheers. <laughs> Ah, Sal, I just wonder whether I can have a look round. Why is that? Haven't you had your fill for one day? Oh, well, you know what it's like when you come away from these things. You can't remember how big the bathroom is or whether it needs a new kitchen. Well, the bathroom's eight by ten and the kitchen's as good as new. Ah. Oh. I couldn't just have a sneak peek upstairs, could I? No, you could not. Sorry, is there a problem? Well, what are you going to do this time, Carla? Take some pictures and put it on the internet with your bitchy little comments? Or are my walk-in wardrobe so hideous she had to come back for more? Tim heard you in the pub, slagging it off with Michelle. After everything she's done for you. Oh, Where is it? Firstly, Sally, um, as you can see, I'm mortified. Well, when she was ill, you couldn't have been any more understanding. How'd you go from that to this? And secondly, it was uh, really all Shell's idea. Would you come with me? In a jacket you didn't like. Looking at one right now. Then later on you think, actually, oh, I quite like that jacket after all. Well, maybe once or twice. Sal, so, I need somewhere to live. Well, there must be thousands of properties for sale in Greater Manchester. Isn't Victoria Court more your style? Been there, done that. And it didn't quite work out, no, Rosie. Look, so this place, it's really got some it. You know, it's warm and welcoming and it's, it's special. And I was wrong and hasty. And, you know, if you let me have another look around, I might well put an offer in. Well, in that case, you can have another look around, can't she? Well, she might as well, Mum, wash there. I'm sorry, Mrs Connor. Oh, come on, Carla, please. But you could offer me £50 million and I still would say no. Well, I'd say that's fairly emphatic, but, uh... Yeah, OK. Fair enough. Thanks for hearing me out, and um, I'm really sorry again. Really sorry. I'll see myself out. Well. Yeah, bye. Cheers, anyway. 50 million quid, eh? I had a bit in her hand off for that. Well, Mum's right. No one makes a mug out of Sally Metcalf. Annie said I can go in and you. Give a walk round it. Eh? Close not. All right, well, listen, if he's not there in two minutes, give us a call, okay? Okay, bye bye, bye bye. Just off to the shops, is there anything you fancy? Well, not unless Dev sells time machines that take you back to missed opportunities. Carl was making fun of me. Oh, so what, Sal? Of our house. And by implication, our life together. Well, who cares? We'd have had a quick sale and we'd be out of here by now. What's more important, that or a stupid opinion? Well, I thought that couple were interesting. Yes, but they weren't, Sal. <sighs> well, I've only come here to make friends. Well, there'll be more buyers, I suppose. And I promise I'm not going to put them off. Yeah. See you later. Oh, what time is it? I'm Miss Lewis. Oh, Lawrence Fox is way too young for you, so. Charming. You think you want a boffin, but you'd be bored, rigid. Right, listen, I'm sorry if I was a bit narky about selling the house to Carla. Yeah, well, apologies beginning with sorry if are not proper apologies. So actions speak louder than words, do they? Always. OK, I have some chalky action. Oh, thank you. Right, I've got some big news. 
Your lottery numbers have come up, but you forgot to buy the ticket. No, I mean, it's how we have well at the jackpot. Eileen says that her and Phelan are thinking about shipping out. Eileen says... No, for real. They're getting out of Dodge. They're going to start somewhere new. Well, they're moving away for good. Yep. 100% definitely? 110% definitely. I'm right to tell you that I wish to withdraw my... Resignation. Resignation as Mayor of Weatherfield due to my personal... Personal circumstances. Personal circumstances are changing. Uh, I'm delighted. I hope it's not too late. Yes, yeah, it's fine. Not too grovelly? No, it's fine. Press send. Resignation withdrawn. Still no word from the girls, though. They're going to be beside themselves. Yeah, Faye's going to be chuffed and all. But I think I'll keep her at my dad's until they've gone. I feel like a weight has been lifted. I wonder what's made them decide to go. Does it matter? Well, I suppose not, but it's odd, though, isn't it? They just decided out of the blue. They just think no more house viewings, no more keeping the place like a show home. What? This house could be so much more. Why don't I like the sound of what you're saying, love? I mean, it's nice enough, Tim, but we're coasting, aren't we? Who wants to settle for nice enough? This whole place needs a refurb. <laughs> Does it, heck? I want a root and branch makeover. <laughs> I'll put so, some white or some magnolia. Slap it on. That is you all over. You really have no imagination, do you? Well, I thought that's what you always liked about me, love. White or magnolia is OK if you're renting it out and you just want a blank canvas, something nobody will hate. Well, they are, and I won't hate it. You won't hate it. I don't want something I won't hate. I want something I'm going to love. I want something other people are going to love. I want character. Aspirational paper. What's that, a paper that wants to be a sideboard? Don't you and me are going to fall out. Anyway, paint's cheaper. I swear, if you bang on about the expense one more time... Oh, now this is nice. Look at this. Italian fresco. Oh, I really like that. What do you think? 47 quid a roll. Ah, and it's one of a range. Right, come on, get ready. We're going shopping. I can't do that with one busy. OK, Timothy. I haven't wanted to say this, but I was prepared to uproot my whole life for you and your daughter. Turn my back on my vocation. Leave my home. The very least you can do is indulge me while I go and buy a few rolls of measly wallpaper. Yeah, 47 quid a roll, actually. All right, I'll get ready, I'll get ready. <laughs> right, I'm ready. Here we go. Maybe that's where you got ideas from. That's not the same. That flock's common. Well, how can that one be common and that one that they want to charge 60 quid for be cutting edge? Because the man in the shop said it was ironic. All oh, right, OK. So first we've got aspiring wallpaper, now we've got sarcastic. Ironic! Oh, do you know what? Forget it. I don't even want flock. I want Italian fresco. Yeah, but we've tried everywhere. No, we tried a few shops and then you got bored. Do I have to come? No, because, God forbid, you would want to put a bit of effort into something that matters to me. Don't you think I get fed up having to do everything myself? I mean, it is our house, our home. Oh, do you know what? Why break the habit of a lifetime? My head is spinning and my poor feet. Oh, Tim. If it matters to you, love, it matters to me. Oh, Tim. Is that good, old Tim, or bad, old Tim? Goodness, it's, um... Bold. Not half. Mm, challenging and all. Absolutely. It's that Italian stuff. <laughs> yeah, stick that in your pipe, Carla Connor. Mm. Ciao, Bella. Quattro stagioni. Eye-wateringly pricey, that, love. Yeah, you can tell. And it's so smooth. Oh, yeah, flock wallpapers for sheep. Did you get it? Made that up. Yeah, so 2017. Do you know, I know this is going to sound pretentious, but I really feel like a pioneer, you know, in the, in the style stakes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's called having a discerning eye, Sal. Hey. Are you listening? Oh, hello. Hey, Sal. Oh, hiya. Should see what Tim's got you. Oh, look at that. Gilt flowers. Oh, he's after some it. Way, eh? No, I just like to treat my wife now and again. <laughs> oh, Tim, they're lovely. How thoughtful. Aren't I lucky? What is that? It's 
It's our new wallpaper. Don't you like it? Oh, uh, it, well, yeah, I wouldn't like to say, but I, I'm surprised you picked it. Well, I know it's a strong design choice, but it's Italian fresco. It's not Italian fresco. I think you'll find it's it... It's Weatherfield fresco. It's at the CAF. I saw it the weekend with Def. That's where I've seen it before! Tim? Oh, uh, well, it's not my fault. The coach said it was the, the, the real deal, love. What are you getting advice from that half wit for? I think we'll leave you to it, Sal. You stay where you are. Looks like I've been needing some more flowers, Tim. You lost everything. A home, a job, a friends. I mean, maybe she went on the run because she was in on it. Well, this is Eileen we're talking about. Yeah, and Eileen's as hard as nails. Do you really think that any man could do a number on her? All right, all right. Even if I doubted her, which I don't, she was in the right state last night, so you should have seen her. You're in a real state today, then, ain't she? But I'm sorry I never doubted you. Gary. I'm fine. Just lived this all out there now. Can you believe Zach? He's a proper hero. And once it all comes out that everything Mum ever did was that sick old fault, she'll be out of that dump. Well, just try and stay realistic, yeah? Go on, you should get off, tell your mum to keep her chin up, will you? Yeah, I will. And if she doesn't, I'll make her. <laughs> And give her my love, won't you? You know, I meant it. I, I should have taken you more seriously. Oh, I just wish I'd have been wrong. Anything. Right. And that's not entirely true. I mean, she has absconded and attacked Eileen. Well, we can appeal the ABH charge. It was an accident. Mum thought Eileen was part. Yeah, of course we can. And we will, but that takes time, doesn't it? Yeah, but that doesn't matter. Not everyone knows the truth. Oh, she was right all along. I'll get it. I just can't wait to have her own. I know, me too. And I'm going to be the best daughter from now on. I'm feeling manipulated, you. Well, even so, I probably grow my mum. Flaming vultures. Some two-bit journalist wanted a quote from Mayor Metcalf on what it's like to live opposite a murderer. Oh. Uh, Nick, Tim, I'll go. <clears throat> How can one man cause so much damage? Well, it's over now, isn't it? He can't hurt any of us ever again. Uh, no, we haven't even gone somewhere. You've no, called Becky. She wouldn't be there in the first place. It wasn't for me. Oh, me? But I was the one that rang the police. If you hadn't have done that... No, don't do it, Faye. Don't blame yourself. That's because of that psycho that Mum's locked up, not because of you. But I listened to him. I believed all of the awful stuff he said for ages. I trusted a murderer over my own mum. Well, how were you supposed to know what he was capable of? Well, Mum did, didn't she? And so did you. I just didn't listen. I don't know why you're beating yourselves up. Yeah, you can only live in the present. Now you have to start thinking about how you can help, Hannah. Mm. Oh, solitaire. Not played that for a long time. So, have you got me 150 quid, then? <laughs> I have spoken with my lawyer, and it appears you are the one who owes me. Uh, sorry. Soiled laundry. Petrol for taking Audrey to the hospital and my time staying with her, which meant I couldn't help see Dan at speed dial. No doubt that contributed to a loss of earnings. All in all, we think £150 should cover it. Come on, Sal, what are you having? Melon Yaz. Uh, white wine, please. Tim. Oh, lovely to see you. Hey, up, Dad. Why didn't you say you were coming over? Do you a pint? Oh, actually, I'm on a date. Oh, you slide up, where is she? Yes, me. Trade fair to get to. Ta. Um, I think I saw that five spice in Devs. Hello, iced finger. Right, I'm gonna get up to the shops. Right, well, don't be spending a fortune. I mean, he's been very free and easy with money since he got that streetcar's bonus, which he very kindly gave to Jack's care. What bonus from streetcars? You know, the thousand pounds they gave themselves. Didn't Steve say anything? Yeah, I wish my job would just chuck money at me whenever I wanted it. The finger. Have a nice day. Yes, me. How's your day? Uh, not good, but I'm um, you later. <laughs> Where'd you see my mate? To the pub. Hello, <laughs> well, you all right? Yeah. You'll need me to put that table up. Hey, what's up? Oh, Abby just had a go. Reckons I'm exploiting people to make myself feel good. But this is all for Jack? Yes. And, you know, I was really angry at first, but then I thought maybe she's got a point. It's not as if Jack's asked me to do this, is it? Or Kevin? You are the most thoughtful, kind, generous, 
sexy woman that I've ever met. Oh, Tim. I bet you even know what Umi Umgami is, don't you? I've never heard of Umi Umgami. Oh, right, look, you're doing the right thing, love. Now, let's go make beautiful coleslaw together. Come on. Frog. Really? Yeah, he's only going to bring a couple of cans. Mm, that's really nourishing. Maybe you should do the gags that you do tomorrow. Maybe I should. Mm. Uh, so, what can I do? Hey, you can take some plates out, if you don't mind. Lovely jubbly. Hey, I've had a brilliant circus idea for tomorrow. Oh, far away. Uh, four clowns in a comedy car. Yeah. They get it running, they get in, and it stops. And they get out, and it starts again. <laughs> yeah, it's got three cars inside of it. You haven't even had a drink yet. Yeah. Oh. That looks nice. You can't have a summer party without a trifle. No, Jeff? Ah, oh, well, very good question. He's upstairs getting ready. Oh, it's all very mysterious. Sounds like him. Yeah, he turned up with a massive carrier bag. Whether it's full of all that escapology stuff or not, I don't know. Yeah, it's probably something to do with magic. Magic? Hey, there's gonna be magic. Hey, Jeff. Calm down, honey. <laughs> You right, Dad? Yeah. Oh, come on. Sounded like a cannonball. Maybe he's going to shoot himself out of a cannon. Not if I have anything to do with it. But he... <laughs> we, can, we can't have a real circus, so we need to create the illusion of one. Well, then maybe Sally can rustle up a few elephants and march them down the street. Top hat and red tails, you lot the business sell. Yeah, and don't forget the whip to keep you all in order. On us. <laughs> That's what you were doing upstairs. I thought I'd come down in this to amuse the kids. <laughs> Duck behind the fence and then, hey, presto, I'll get myself out. How are you going to do that? Magic, of course. <laughs> My client's prepared a written statement half. In June of this year, I approached Mrs. Metcalf, then still mayor, for funding for my stroke charity, My May Foundation. She agreed to help. We became friends. And before long, at her instigation, we embarked on an affair. I soon felt that this was a mistake and wanted to end it. But she threatened to tell her husband that I'd been sexually harassing her and warned me that he was a violent man. The only way she would let me go unharmed was if I helped her defraud the council's charitable fund of the sum of £40,000. But then I discovered she'd already put the money into my private bank account. She then texted me on the burner phones we'd used while conducting our affair, telling me to put the cash into a hidden joint account she'd set up for the purpose. Failure to do so would mean she'd report me to the police. I submit, for your examination, the burner phone which has evidence of all our communications throughout this time, which will corroborate everything in this statement. Signed, Duncan Arthur Radfield. 10th of August, 2018. Landlord, can I get a pint, a white wine and a, a whiskey with a straw in it, please? He's uh, taking his fundraising seriously. Yeah, well, those Metcalfs never do out by arms. Oh, you done so disappointed. Oh, it'll be all right. <laughs> the important thing is, is what you achieved today, love. Not many people could have done that. Raised all that money and all them good ideas. Oh. Everybody was chipping in. I mean, you helped. Well, I flipped a few burgers. No, you booked me up when I was doubting myself. Would you take a compliment? You're an amazing woman, you are, love, and I'm proud of you. <laughs> Can we interest you in the fundraiser for Jack? It'd be very nice to have two hot shots like yourself there. I'm sure we'll be making a contribution. Oh. Do you know, I really feel like this is a new chapter in our lives, Tim. Sure it is. And you really think she's the Robert Maxwell of Weatherfield, do you? You'll see. I feel like a right idiot. How come you get to be ringmaster? One word, charisma. I've got it, you haven't. Right. Roll up! Roll up for the greatest show on earth! Right, I've done the tables and chairs downstairs. What else, Gaffer? Oh, I've not checked the weather. I hope it doesn't rain. I've still got this banner to put up. Oh, I hope this goes well for Jack. Oh, of course it will. We'll make loads of money. Got my beard, so. Yeah. <laughs> it's my only flower. Oh, not now, Gina. Yasmin, ten minutes, please. Ten no minutes. No problem, no problem on schedule. Oh. I can't leave Metcalf. It's a force of nature, a bossy force of nature that I may strangle oh. any minute, but nevertheless. Well, oh, yeah, it really reminds me of someone that I know. Me, bossy. 
My, don't you look handsome. Such a commanding presence. Better than a straitjacket. It was a tad restrictive. However, my brief period of incarceration gave me time to think. And I've had an idea. It's a good one. Hit me. Well, I know you've been worried about Imran pulling his investment out of this place, so... How about I draw down some of my savings and I invest instead? Oh. I told you it was a good one. Yes, but... I know I'm new to the restaurant game, but that could be an advantage. Fresh perspectives, new ideas. It's terribly sweet of you, but... But? Because that money is going to help a young lad build a future for himself after a terrible tragedy. And one special oh. person who's made it all possible, and that is, drum roll, Sally Metcalf! Yes. Oh, Sally Metcalf! Speech, speech! speech. Short one. Oh, go on, Sal, say a few words. Yeah, go on, say something, Sal. Well, I'd just like to thank everybody here today and everybody who's put some money in that bucket. <laughs> DS Clark. Can I help you, officer? Sally Metcalf. Uh, yeah, that's me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'd like you to accompany us to the station, please, for questioning. Uh, but I'm entertaining the children. Hang on a minute. She just organised the whole event. I'm sorry. This is important. Sally Metcalf, I'm arresting you for fraud, bribery and money laundering. Ridiculous and utterly embarrassing. Come with us, please. We have a car outside. I can't go anywhere. I stood on my foot. Is this about Duncan running off for the charity money? We have a warrant to search your house. Search for what? This is an ongoing investigation and would appreciate your support. Well, you're barking up the wrong tree, mate. Let them do their job, son. Quickest way to get this sorted. Well, we should be OK. Stay strong, Sal! Stay strong! I wish you'd take Gina away. You're right, I heard that. She is a bit, you know... Yeah, I know. Helen Thomas, Weatherfield Gazette. I wonder if we might have a little chat. Not now, eh, love? Can you confirm that you were arrested earlier at a charity event? Please, leave me alone. You are the elected mayor of Weatherfield. Don't you think people have the right to know what's going on? We don't even know what's going on. So you deny all charges? I deny everything. I've done nothing wrong. The public have a right to know. This is harassment. Go away. I mean it. You'll get nothing from us today. Right, so they've caught Duncan and they've charged Sally with fraud, bribery and money laundering. Well, how come they charge you? Because he said it was my idea. Oh, well, no one's going to believe that, are they? I mean, look at you. You're not stolen anything. Well, apparently he's got these mobile phones and he's set up texts between them to make it look like it was her plan all along. That's ridiculous. Well, he's obviously trying to save his own skin, isn't he? Well, the police will check it out and you'll be all right. He's set up bank accounts. Yeah, but they can't be connected to you, love. Well, they're going to give it a damn good try, aren't they? I mean, that thousand pounds that you said came from streetcars, they think that's part of the scam. They think that Duncan put dirty money into my account. Well, it didn't come from streetcars. Well, where did it come from, then? I don't know. It came from Duncan! Well, I, I thought it was a bank error. I thought if I took it out quick, I'd get to keep it. And I thought I was the stupid one. Well, well I've got no idea. I was just trying to help out Jack. Well, now they're going to think I'm as guilty as sin. <sighs> They'll get to the truth. <laughs> See you tomorrow. There's no way I could have known where that money came from. There's no way you could either. It was all part of Duncan's plan. He was after that money. And he set me up with a little insurance policy in case anything went wrong. And that insurance policy paints me as a villain. You're innocent. I don't look so innocent now, do I? Not now I've taken a thousand pounds out of my bank account that he transferred from the fraud money. Yeah, but you didn't take it out, love. It was me. You're my husband. That's just as bad. Well, I'll, I'll tell him it was me and it had nothing to do with you. You haven't seen the text he made up. Please think we were having an affair. Hey? An affair? Yes. Well, wh why didn't you tell me this before, then? Because Gina was here and... Why do they think that you were having an affair? Because they've got transcripts. 
dozens of texts of me declaring undying love and planning a fraud. Why would they do that? To frame me! It's all made up. Well, I did warn you about him. I know he did. Do you believe me, don't you? Yeah. Of course I do. You're my wife. Because... I would never... I love you. I know you do. Tim, look at me. I swear to you, on everything that I hold dear, that I did not have an affair with Duncan. And I did not steal any money. Dressed as a clown, but everybody says it'll get sorted out soon. No, Sophie, honestly, it's fine. You stay with Jack and Kevin. I've got Tim here, he's been great. No, no, honestly. Look, I'm gonna have to go because our tea's ready. All right, love, I'll see you soon. Bye. You're a good liar. I don't mean like lying to the police, I mean lying to make sure that Sophie doesn't worry. Good lying. Well, I told the police the whole truth and nothing but the truth, but they don't believe me. Well, everybody around here knows you and trusts you. Knows me and trusts you. What do you think? I got arrested in front of everyone. They'll all be sat round the table, eating their tea, talking about me. Who's oh, talking to food? I'm hungry. Do you want something to eat? No, I'm fine. I'm sorry about that money from streetcars. That wasn't you, that was me. I know people round here don't like me. They think I'm snooty and pretentious, that I'd do anything to feather my own nest. Well, that's not true. But I had no idea that he was doing it any of this. I mean, what if he's planted other stuff? You know, what I don't understand is what, what, why he was trying to make it out like you two were having an affair. Well, because it makes me look devious, doesn't it? Cheating on my husband and whipping off the council. It makes him look like the innocent victim and I've been manipulating him. What? You do believe me, don't you? Yeah, of course I do. When I was in the police station and they hit me with all that stuff, I couldn't believe what was happening. But I looked at their faces and they believed Duncan's story. And now I'm looking at you. I, I said I believe you. I, I know you and I, I love you, so... I need you on my side. I am on your side. Tim, I'm scared here. I'm really scared. Obviously, it's all lies. It's all over the papers, love. Some of your friends might say something. Yeah, and, well, you need to tell them that it's just rubbish, made-up stuff. Yeah, but is it all made up? You were arrested. Yeah, and released. On bail. They charged you. Well, they charged your mum. They sent her to trial and everything, but she was innocent and all. Faye, please believe me. I didn't do this. I've already told you I do. But you need to get yourself a hotshot lawyer or else I'll send you down. You sound like an American TV show. That's how it works, man. Anyway, I'm going to town. I'll see you later. See you later. You know what? She's right. I do need a hotshot lawyer. I'm going to go and see Imran. Oh, I don't think that's a good idea, love. He's perfect. He's representing Duncan. Walk in there. I can. I will. How dare you! Both of you. Sally, look, it's just business. You've known my family for years. My daughter worked for you. I'm sorry. You do know it's all lies, don't you? I'm sure your lawyer will prove that if you're innocent. I can recommend some good ones. Oh, yeah, you'd recommend an idiot so you'd win. You wouldn't do that. Does Ken know you're doing this? Trying to put one of his oldest friends into prison? It's not like that. It's exactly what it's like. I'm sorry, Sally, but I think you should leave. Yeah, come on, Sally, let's go. They clearly don't care. Oh, you didn't have
It said 66 on that letter. Shouldn't even be here. Well, it's not going to hurt to talk to his daughter, is it? What's Olivia going to be able to do? We'll get her to talk some sense into him. Find out what the truth really is. We know what the truth is. Well, maybe get her on side then. Just as long as Duncan doesn't see us. He won't. We'll park here and wait for it. Yeah, plus I bought these for insurance. How is everything? Oh. Might not even be his house. Well, it definitely said 66. What if you were looking at it upside down and it was really 99? What do you think you're doing? Drinking tea outside my house. Is that a crime? This is witness intimidation. We're not intimidating you, mate. You approached us. Oh, you're the one being intimidating. Look, Tim, I know this must be hard for you to find out not only that your wife's a criminal, but that she's been having an affair. He doesn't believe a word of it. The police have my phone, Sally. All our texts. The phones were fake. The texts were fake. I'm genuinely sorry, mate, but it's the truth. Ask the police, they'll show you. Details of all the times and places we met. First time we kissed. First time we made love. Tim, it's lies, all lies. I mean, law come out in court, I'm afraid. But you should know she never said she didn't love you. It's just that you didn't satisfy her in the bedroom. Come on. You'll be sorry you did that. You wound him up deliberately. I was just trying to tell the poor guy the truth, something you should have done months ago. We're not listening to another word. Come on, Tim. You need to know what kind of person your wife is. He's messing with your head. Let's go. It's all in my fold. It'll all come out in court. All the time she betrayed you. Are you after another smack? That's exactly what he's after. Don't rise to it. You know what the truth is, Tim? <sighs> I told you this was a bad idea. Here we are. Enjoy. Why not find some? Well, you could have a can. I'd rather drink here. What a traitor. I just want a pint on my own. Gemma. Oh, don't bother. Tim, we really need to talk. We can talk later. So, how's Weatherfield's most wanted? I meant what I said about recommending a lawyer. I don't want anything from you. I'll put the dinner on. We'll see you in a bit. Heard about the arrest, mate. We all know Sal won't do something like that. Can I have a word? I thought you didn't want anything else to do with me. Oh, don't be so dramatic. Oh, Carla, have you been in the link? Mrs. Metcalf? Yes. Is your husband in? No, I'm afraid he's not. Do you know where he is? No, I'm sorry. Oh, here he is. That's lucky. Mr. Metcalf? Yeah. Can we go inside, please? Yeah. We've had an allegation of assault by Mr. Duncan Radfield. Did you visit his house earlier today? No. He said that you did and that you hit him. I didn't. Are you saying you didn't visit him at all? <clears throat> What's he saying exactly? He says that your husband was waiting outside in the car to accost him when he came home, that he then confronted him about his accusations towards you and then hit him when he confirmed you had had an affair. That never happened. We were never there. He said it was just you there. Can you account for your whereabouts around midday? We can ask for witnesses. Well, he was with me all day. Are you sure about that, Mrs. Metcalf? If we find your husband was there and you're lying about an alibi, this could seriously damage your case. All right, okay, I was there. But Sally wasn't. Tim. I found his address and yeah, I confronted him. Then I'm afraid we have to arrest you for assault and witness intimidation. You don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention, when questioned, something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Do you understand? Yeah. No. Uh, no, it's all right, Sal. I'll no, do it. No, I'm coming with no, you. No, Sal, you stay here. No, but 
but this isn't fair. Duncan's lying. I'm sorry, Mrs. Metcalf. Well? Let me off with a caution. Oh, thank God. Yeah. Luckily, there was no visible injuries and nobody witnessed me eating him. How dare he call the police anyway? It's funny how he left your name out of it, isn't it? What do you mean? I wonder why. Maybe he was trying to protect you. Tim, we were not having an affair. I've told you, he's making it up. What about the text? How many times he faked them? Well, I asked you to give that charity money over to somebody else, but you wouldn't. Because I thought I was doing a good thing. No, because Duncan persuaded you. Well, he had a very good case. Yeah, must have done. Do you really believe that I could commit a fraud? No, of course not. Unless... What? Unless you were doing it to cover for somebody who had something over you. Or you were involved with somebody. I would never cheat on you. Well, you nearly did with Kevin once. That was different. Was it? Tim, this is exactly what he wants. I swear to you, on Rosie and Sophie's lives, that nothing has happened between me and Duncan. Please say you believe me. I'm trying to. How's Jack? Yeah, he's all right. Please give him another night. Hello, hello. Oh, hi, Jeff. You've got me rubbed in and all, have you? Lots to eat, sadly. I'm here to do a shift in the kitchen. Turning dirty dishes into... Hey. Clean ones! Very oh, good. That's brilliant, that. I thank you. And I'll thank you when you get in here. Yes, ma'am. Action stations, action stations. Bandits at 11 o'clock. Are you high? The critique. Looks like a certain somebody's been stood up, Sal. So that's why he wanted to come here. I knew you were up to something. Maybe him and Arfe could be back on. Well, I wouldn't hold your breath if I were you. Oh. It might be nice if you listened to me for a bit instead of earwigging on those two. I've had a few boyfriends. Not a serious one, though. Relationship, I mean, not people. <laughs> <laughs> Although one or two of them were actually quite serious within themselves. Mm. This one lad worked in a museum. He was well weird. Never laughed at anything. Like, jokes, cartoons, burps, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> mm. But no, no serious relationships. What about you? Tell me all about your past. Do you have any skeletons in your closet? Well, is everything OK? Right, then give him another dose of paracetamol if he's due one and just put him to bed. Fate, I've got to go. Bye-bye. You can't be a saint. You must have some deep, dark secrets locked up somewhere. Well, uh, Yeah, there is something I need to tell you. Oh, sounds ominous. <laughs> yeah. Um, when, um, when me and Faye were together, there was, uh, something serious. Something serious between you and Faye? Yeah. Well, no, sort of. But... <sighs> Stop it. What I'm trying to say is, um... You're still in love with her? Gosh, I might as well come out on my own. <laughs> Why does this keep happening to me? David ended it with me to get back with his ex, and I'm not about to go through it all over again. I'm no rebound for no one. Don't panic! It's OK, it's just an accident. Relax on. Yeah. Look, listen. I'm sorry that it didn't work out with you and Emma. Well, no, I'm not, I'm not sorry, actually, because Faye's in a bad way about you. She's not. She said she was fine. She is. Trust me. I can't believe this is happening. 
can't you? I told you he weren't well. He were not like this, Faye. I took him to the medical centre, Mum. They said he would be fine. Exactly. Nobody's to blame. Well, we're in the right place. We're going to get to the bottom of whatever it is. How is he? Jack's not well, but the initial diagnosis was correct. It's a viral infection. Now, we checked for meningitis and he's clear. So he's going to be all right? With a few days rest, he should be fine. Look, you can't rest. He's burning up. Oh, it'll pass. In the meantime, I recommend that you continue with regular doses of paracetamol suspension. That should relieve his fever. Thanks, Doctor. <sighs> I don't know what I'd have told my dad if it was serious. I'll ring him. The main thing is, there's nothing for him to worry about. Oh. Well, a person can pick up an infection in a number of different ways. I mean, it's incredibly rare, but he might have caught the bug through the graze in his knee. What, a graze knee can put you in intensive care? Well, 99.99 times out of 100, a graze knee is no more than that. Dad, I am so sorry. Where's Jack? Tell me. I'm sorry, but Jack is very unwell. He's, he's on life support. <gasps> well, the doctors have been running some tests, and they suspect it might be sepsis. Yeah, Ali was the one that first cottoned on, Kev. He called the ambulance. But Dad, they kept telling me it was going to be OK over and over what, again. What happened now? Look, everything that can be done is being done. He's in good hands, Kevin. We just need to stay positive. What's happening? I'm sorry, we haven't been introduced. No, I'm Jack's dad. How is it? Our tests have confirmed your son has sepsis. How what does that mean? It's caused by an infection. Well, rather, it's caused by the blood. Look, I don't care what it is. I just mean, what does it mean for Jack? The next 24 hours are going to be crucial. We have to eradicate the infection from his body. And if you can't? We have every reason to believe that we can achieve a successful outcome. Yeah, but if you can't, is he in danger? If we can't treat the infection, then, yes, sepsis can be a life-threatening condition. But we're doing everything we can. Excuse me. I'm telling her that if she nicks my good shampoo one more time, I swear, I'll rag her head off. <coughs> one human shield reporting for duty. Mm. I've made you a pack lunch that I'll put a canteen to rip off. Oh, ta, love. We can share this. Well, I'm not coming. I've got Seb coming over. She don't need a chaperone. To measure up the tiles. You haven't forgotten, have you? They're delivering the new bathroom suite this week. I've got to clear out the conservatory. <sighs> no. You had forgotten. Look, Seb's going to start prepping ready for when Gary gets back. Oh, I'm going to have to cancel. No chance. You let builders go, you never get them back. You'll be tripping over bathroom fittings till Christmas. Tim, I'm not picking towel wells and tiles. Well, we'll do it. No. I mean, thank you, but I'm halfway through a mood board inspired by the ladies' loose at Beasley's. Do you remember Tim in Old the Edge? Yeah, I do. 14 quid for a gin and tonic with a twig in it. Oh, damn. I've not finalised that meeting yet for the grant application. Do you know, there's three charities chasing that. I am never going to get this done. Come on, deep breaths, one job at a time. Leave Seb to me and Faye. The council stuff can wait. Jack's our priority now. Send in my love. Yeah. Morning, Doctor. What are you doing here? Hey, I'm quite often here for one committee or another. Profile raising, also known as rattling my begging bowl. Oh, poor you, I hate hospitals. They give me the creeps. Do they? Yes, yeah, the smell. Is my May Foundation in line for any hospital grants? And the lights are always too bright. And there's never any air. Well, I hope for your sake, Tim, you never fall ill. Oh, have I just put my foot in it? No, we're here because my ex-husband's little boy, he's in ICU, he's got sepsis. Oh, I'm sorry. If I can help in any way. Oh, that would be very kind. His name's Jack Webster. Jack Webster. I see you. I hope your meeting goes well. You too. Take care. Bye. But his wife died of a stroke. Like my mum. So you'll know stroke doctors, they're not sepsis doctors. He's on a committee of bigwigs, Tim. Don't knock a gift horse. If it makes them sit up and take more notice of Jack, who are we to say no? Hit me. I keep thinking he's just a kid and kids bounce back. Well, you don't think he'll make it? I think he could die. Oh, give me a break. I'll just leave it, Sally. You've got a whole team of people to deal with that. Seb. No, 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 don't start stripping tiles. No. Don't even move so much as a towel. Y yeah, well, I'm just on my way back from the hospital now. OK, bye-bye, bye. -bye. bye. 
Listen, Sal, you've put your life and soul into this mayor's job. You can't make big decisions like that. There's so much on your mind. This grant award is my baby. Yeah, and Jack's Kev's baby. He's a lot more important than a poxy few grand. Well, not to the charities, it's not. Well, let him be judged properly, not by somebody who's got half an ear cocked for a call from the hospital. Now, promise me that you'll hand this over to Jeanette as soon as you get back to your desk. I promise. So how did the news go down? Did you ask for a fortnight off or just indefinite? I didn't. I emailed my team and I brought the grant meeting forward. It's just, I bumped into Duncan on his way out and he made me realise that Kevin's got plenty of backup in here. It's when he gets home that he's going to need our help. You know, washing and cooking and helping with Jack till he goes back to school. And if I walk away from this grant committee now, who's going to get the final say? The bean counters. So? So they don't know what it's like personally to desperately need these charities. Are those your words on Duncan's? I have got a mind of my own, Tim. Mm. <sighs> it just gives me... I should say something. Nah, there's no to say till Jack gets out, so it's gonna be a mess. Who's that? No, it's just something about the charity money. Duncan. Yes, Duncan, so what? I don't know, I just think you gotta be careful around him. What do you mean? I'm sorry, I just don't trust him. Outside? Oh, come on, Mom. Yes, Barlow, what can I get you? Oh, red wine, please. Do you really think this is the best time to be talking oh, about this? That's the point I'm making. This isn't. You're upset, Sal. Of course I'm upset. So you shouldn't be making decisions like this, should you? Your emotions. My emotions are what? All over the place, because I'm a silly little woman who's susceptible to a soft story. Yeah, I'm not saying that, but you have to admit that Duncan's been pecking your head about this. No, he hasn't. Oh, really? So you talk to other candidates as much as you've talked to him, have you? You're being ridiculous. Am I? You admitted that he was the one that talked you out of dropping out of the selection process. No wonder he wants you involved, because he knows that you're supporting him. Hey, I have never... Hang on. Are you jealous? Are you jealous of the fact that I get on with Duncan? My egg. I'll have you know that making the decision to stay with this process was nothing to do with him. In fact, he actually offered to withdraw his application. Oh, come on. What? Well, it's easy to offer something. It doesn't mean to say that you're going to do it, does it? You all right? Fine. Yeah, yeah, we're fine. Kev saw you go. He was wondering whether you... Oh, just tell him we'll be in in a sec. <sighs> do you know what? I don't want to talk about this now. There's enough of us here. Why don't you just go home? Why? Because I need to focus on Jack, not have silly squabbles with you. Well, this isn't. Tim, please, just go home. I don't want to leave you. Well, I don't want you here. Look, we'll talk later. I'll tell Kevin and Sophie that something came up with Faye that you couldn't get out of. I was just trying to look out for you, you know. Ring me later, yeah? Is that her? I know I said we'd talk later, but... Well, let's talk tomorrow. I've run you a bath. I love you. I love you too. And I'm sorry for not being more supportive. You ran a bath, so... I know, I know, and uh, doubting you. I know how hard you work. Now, do you want tea or a glass of wine? Tea. Tea. Where's so? Aw, they're lovely. Thought I forgot, didn't you? Well... I had an early shift. I wanted to be here when you saw them. Oh, that is so romantic. Oh, I'm so happy. Just had a text from Kevin. He won't leave Jack's side. No, I don't. It makes you wonder if that charity money should go towards kids like that, doesn't it? Well, there are charities for that. Anyway, I've made my decision. What, Duncan's? Well, there's nothing like that round here that I can see. This gives stroke patients dignity in the last few months. I mean, families are desperately in need of that. Oh, it's fine. It's none of my business, Sal. I should have kept my mouth shut. Well, as long as it doesn't come between us. Well, I won't let it if you want. <laughs> come <laughs> here. Johnny, 
Morning. Oh, morning. Are you after me? Duty calls. I'll be with you in a minute. You could say hello, you know. Good man has cost nothing. Can't stay away, can he? I saw him with that bunch of flowers yesterday and that stupid grin on his face. You never said anything. Well, they're not in the house, were they? Well, I told him to take them away. It was very kind of him, but things like that can get misconstrued. When you're in the public eye, you're open to scrutiny, especially when you're dealing with money. Yeah, well, I don't trust him. Yes, you have said that, Tim. Are you limping? Oh, shoe's been giving me jip. I think the tongue's come adrift. I've been thinking, we should set up a task force. What to do? Well, uh, to generate fundraising ideas uh, for Jack. Oh, Brian, that's a brilliant idea. In fact, Duncan here, he's a professional fundraiser, you know. How is Jack? I'm heading off there now to see him. Uh, perhaps we could uh, pick your brains, you know, all hands to the pump, etc. Of course, I'd be glad to. Well, I could come over to your office this afternoon if you're free. No, sorry, not this afternoon. I'm in meetings all day. Oh, some other time. Tomorrow will be perfect. Well, I'll get some movers and shakers together. Um, I'll text you. Thanks, Brian. Yeah. See you later. See you. Yeah, bye, love. So, what can I do for you? Well, I feel awful bothering you. Didn't See, it does exist. I was beginning to think that... All right, I found the council and stopped Duncan's payment. Who's this? I'm Stacey. Well, he's cleared out his office. It's completely empty. The company folded months ago. Accusations of mismanagement. Oh, no. Mum, none of this is your fault. Of course it's not. You'd have thought the council had to check twice before they handed out loads of cash. Yeah. Well, usually, before making such a large payment, we'd check and double-check. It's due diligence. But because you insisted we pay it today... Look, I'll ring Duncan. I'm sure there's a perfectly good explanation. It's disconnected. I've been conned. This can't be happening. Look, just try and stay calm or it might not be as bad as it looks. He's emptied his office, Sophie. He's long gone. OK. Right, yeah. Will do. Bye. Well, they've checked with the bank. It's too late. The money's gone. Oh, my God. Jeanette's on her way. She'll go through everything with you. Right, well, that's good. Who's Jeanette? The council's head of finance. She's a good friend and an ally. She's always supported me. Honestly, now Jeanette's on the case. We'll sort something out. Yeah. £40,000 gone because of me. Hello, honey, me. Oh, I thought you were Jeanette. Who? Jeanette from the council. Duncan's come, my mum. Hey? Well, I know that technically what you've done could be seen as fraud, but fraud? I... Fraud? Yeah, he's classed as fraud, Tim, but anyone in the right mind would know she's not doing it on purpose. Yeah, but I doubt the good people of Weatherfield will see it that way. Well, hang on, don't... can someone tell me what's going on? Not now, Gina, eh? I'll get it. I'm sure there's something we can do. I certainly hope so. The last thing we need is a scandal. Yeah, I always knew that Duncan was bad news, even if he is actually called Duncan. I always thought there was something a bit off about him. Yeah, well, you told me not to trust him, but would I listen? Jeanette, I'm so sorry to have dragged you into all of this. I've worked for the council for 33 years. Nothing like this has ever happened before. Yeah, but you will be able to track the money, won't you? Get it back. I don't see how. Well, everything has a trace, doesn't it? A paper trail. You'll be able to track it. Technology. The money's been withdrawn. The account closed. Oh. We don't have a hope in hell of getting it back. Almost broke my heart when he told me about his wife. She died of a stroke like our mum. I mean, he was on the verge of tears every time he told me. What? You don't think he lied about that as well, do you? Of course he did. He must have researched you, looked into your past. Mum, all the information's out there from the interviews that you've done. And... I'm afraid all this is irrelevant in the scheme of things. We need to account for what's happened. Can you explain to us why you demanded that we pay the money into his account today? Well, he, he told me he had the chance to buy some equipment at a very good price, but it had to be today. I admit, I mean, when I say it out loud, it does sound very suspicious. Yeah, he was a good liar. There's something else that's bothering me. I read through all the applications on deadline day. Duncan's definitely wasn't amongst them. Can you shed any light? He missed the deadline. 
He got his application in late, so I sent it in separately. Why would you do that? Well, it was delayed because he was trying to sort out his late wife's things. I felt really sorry for him. You've enabled this man to get away with huge amounts of council money. I will pay that money back. Every last penny. Sorry, that'll be Dev. Especially meeting him in the castle. Oh, Jimmy, you go. There's nothing you can do here. Are you sure? Yeah, come on. I'll text you. But as I was saying, I will pay that money back. I know it's a small fortune, but I will find a way, I promise. You do know I'm going to have to report you to the police. It's out of my hands. The problem is, Sally's actions make her look complicit in all this. Every time she flouted a rule, she put herself at risk. You can't honestly think that my mum is in on it. Yeah, all the time she's given you, like, all the work she's done. She can't just clock on and off like you two, you know. What's that got to do with anything? Everything Sally's done, she's done to make a difference. Now, how many of us can honestly say that? I'll hang fire for now. Discuss it with the council before I involve the police. No, you should report it immediately, because the sooner they look into it, the better chance they've got of catching him. She's right. We've got to go by the book. We'll try and keep your name out of it as much as we can. Thank you. Well, she's not the only one that's up to her neck, innit? Well, you released the money on her say-so. Somebody should have checked it first. But she told us to pay it, so... Yeah, pay it to charity. Why didn't somebody check that it was going into a personal account? But it's not... No, no, hang on a minute. Why should your name be dragged through the mud? Your reputation's everything to you, love. One thing's for sure. Your position as mayor is no longer tenable. The only way to avoid a scandal is to resign. Honestly, she went as white oh, as she... I am so stupid. You need to give yourself a break, love. You're so lovely sticking up for me, but, you know, you're wrong. All this, it's, it's not about making a difference. It's about an ego. I enjoy feeling important, like I can click my fingers and make decisions. And... Well, maybe, but that's not the whole story, is it? I wonder if Jeanette's doing the right thing, keeping my name out of it. That's the least you could do. I need to face the consequences of my actions. No, 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 no. There's no way that you're going to take all the flack when it's not your fault. You know, this has happened before, don't you? Has it? When? I got involved with this man, Greg Kelly. He ripped me off and all. OK, well, there's no point raking up the past when we've got all this to deal with, is there? Why do you go and get a bath? Good idea. I've got to nip to work for ten minutes. I'll pick us a takeaway. I love you. And I love you too. Come here. <laughs> you know, I've not got very good. You've not said out to anybody yet, have you? Put it this way, if they caught me on CCTV, we might be sharing a cell tonight. Oh, we've got a flask of chamomile tea, some rice cakes, and my mini lavender pillow to help me relax. Don't do this, Sal. You've been so stupid, it's what I deserve. You made a mistake, you were manipulated by a crook. Yes, and legitimate charities are going to lose out because of me. Oh, Sally, you'll learn from this, I know you will. You'll work harder and you'll be even more determined. And you know what, if they start to investigate, me and Steve will get dragged into it. You and Steve? Yeah. We broke into Duncan's office. Now, listen, I know that you want to be seen doing the right thing, but you don't deserve the kind of punishment the court's going to chuck at you. So why don't you just resign as mayor? I know that means the world to you, and that's sacrifice enough. And you've promised you'll pay all the money back, and that's the main thing. You're right. So you'll resign? I'll do it tonight. I'll be fine as long as I've got you. Oh, I'm going nowhere, Mrs. Metcalf. <laughs> You've got me till hell freezes over. Come on. Honestly, this is. Well, it's brutal. done. I've handed in my resignation, cleaned out my desk. It was all very discreet, as you can imagine. Good, because I did think. Master Ben Hur gathered round to watch, including the reporter from that rag. So, brace yourselves for tomorrow's headlines, cos I'm the scandal. I've done everything I've done for this town. Oh, come on, love. I always knew it was going to end in disgrace. 
Everything always does when I'm involved. No, oh, shh, that's not true. I wonder which photo they're going to use of me. I hope they use that nice one of me on the town hall steps with the green dress and the knee-high boots. Yeah. Hang on, mate, I've got to go. I've got to go. Yeah, OK, bye, bye. All right, love. Who's that? Peter. See, so let me know who's boss, do you? No, well, I was, I was just winding him up. Take a leaf out of my book. Yeah, well, we were going to go to the dogs, but Toya said that he's, he's got to work. Hey, I was thinking about inviting your dad round for his tea tonight. Really? Yeah. I mean, we never have him over, do we? Yeah, that's because you think he's a bit much. Well, he is a bit much, but it's us making an effort. Well, he'll be chuffed to bits with that. And it's a good opportunity to talk to him about dating that ridiculous woman. Well, as long as that's not the only reason. Not at all. I mean, I hardly know him. I don't know anything about him. Well, what is it to know? Well, you tell me. Well, he's just a typical bloke. Well, there must be more to him than that. No, he likes his football. Uh, he likes going for a pint. He likes a bit of fishing. And um, he likes his magic, of course. Oh, well, I don't want him doing any tricks tonight. You should tell him. Well, I'm not going to tell him that. He can leave his wand at home. Hey, did I mention he's a big county fan? You know what? Maybe we should leave tonight. No, no, I'm bang into the idea. I'm going to ring him right now. Well, tell him under no circumstances is he allowed to bring that Yasmin. Hey, I'm going to invite uh, Dev and Gina to make a bit of a night of it, shall we? Oh, yeah. Why don't you nip in the shop and ask them? Hey, I could make my prawn and scallop risotto. Yeah, p perfect, that. Hello, oh, Dev. Hello. Ooh, favourite pub in Weatherfield. It's got to be the false number nine down by the county ground. Yeah. Used to be the referee's decision. But the Rovers, yeah? Oh, yeah, the Rovers was... Better when Steve had it. He used to slip me the odd half. Did he? Mm. Mind you, so does Peter. Does he? So, what have you done with the kids? Oh, bending for themselves. Be all right for a couple of hours, won't they? Yeah, they're at that age now, aren't they? Oh, that'd be me, Dad. Hey, honey, you think I should have worn a jacket? Oh, give over, you look gorgeous. Yeah. I know there's been some fuss over a bird table, but you didn't mind me bringing this young lady, did you? Yes, man. What? Brilliant. He's wearing a jacket. Hello, Sally. Oh. Thought you'd get him on his own, did you? I bet you made a list of all the reasons he should ditch me. Well, I had done, but I'd run out of paper. So, Jeff, what's your favourite pub in Weatherfield, then? <sighs> That'll be the false number nine by County's Ground. <laughs> I'm not joking. Steve, now and then, yeah, I take the kids when they get discounted tickets from school, but, uh, no. Green-blooded me. Yeah? You'll have to take me one day. Mm. What, you to the football? Oh. Well, Sally's been a county widow for a long time, haven't you, Sal? First week, Kev, now this one. He starts off the chance and everything, don't you, Dad? I'll have their song played at my funeral. Why? Mm. What is their song? I'd better make a note of it. I <laughs> dream of Weatherfield every oh. night. I cheer the lads in green. <laughs> it's Saturday <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> my love and county are my team. <laughs> county! County! <laughs> county. <laughs> I, I sing it every time I drive past the ground. <laughs> Or if I'm in the red wreck feeding the ducks. Mm -mm. You can see the West Stand rising up from the duck pond like a fortress. <laughs> <laughs> it's just 11 men in green. Oh, no, it's more than that, Sally. Yeah, well, I'm not having the substitutes. <laughs> Maybe you should cut them some slack. Men are allowed hobbies too. Being the mayor of Weatherfield is not a hobby, if that's what you're alluding to. A lady? Not a hobby, then. A pastime. Well, you voted for me. Uh-huh. I was under the misapprehension you'd fulfil your campaign promises. Yes, well, welcome to politics, yeah. <laughs> mm. Well, write me a list of all the promises that I've broken. I thought you'd run out of paper. <clears throat> pick a card. I don't want to pick a card. Come on, pick a card, Sal. Oh. If I can find your card, do you two both agree to shake hands? OK. We'll see. Tim? Mm? Yeah? Is there a card in my back pocket? Uh. Uh. Nope. I'll try my jacket. Nope, nothing in there. <laughs> it's not work. Clean up, <laughs> check Deb's pockets. Deb's? What's me? Come on, there's nothing in there. <laughs> Is that your card? Maybe. Well, I think you better shake hands. A promise is a promise. 
I'm not shaking anything. She broke my bird table. Oh, come on, Sal. So she reneges. Typical public servant. Whoa, 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 whoa. If I can fix your bird table, could we move on the handshake? Oh, it's beyond repair. Tim, fetch it. Yes, sir. <laughs> I see what you mean. It's in a right old mess. Yeah. You want me to bring my toolbox? Take more than a screwdriver to put this right. I'm sorry, Sal. There's nothing I can do. After all that. What did I tell you? He's a fraud. Will you stop insulting my boyfriend? Boyfriend? Well, he's making an effort. I made an effort. Prawn and scallop risotto, you know. It don't grow on trees. Three hours I was preparing that before he waltzed in here with you. There was plenty to go around. Dad must think we're on rations. Mm -hmm. No, honestly, yourself. I'm not full. He could have had mine. Can you do another trick? Turn Yasmin into a rabbit. Or perhaps he could saw you in half. You know, you're not the only magician around here. She made her husband disappear from one bed to another, just like that. Sally. Yeah, she drives him away. Like you drove away Kevin. You see? You got more in common than you think. You both got shot of Baddens. Kev's all right. Yeah, but us Metcalf men aren't like that. We're not disappearing. You're all sewing you in half. <laughs> Look, you've said some terrible things to each other. You've got it off your chest. But now it's time to move forward. As neighbours. Together. Shake hands, Sal. Well, will you buy me a new bird table, then? I'll go halves. But it's not going anywhere near my boundary. Now, that's magic. Are you just on my phone? Yeah, yeah, I thought it was Gary, so I answered it, only it was Sarah, which is a bit weird. I think I confused her. Well, that's what happens when you pick up other people's phones. Well, I think she thought I was Nicola. Nicola? Why would Nicola be on my phone? Well, I've no idea. I said it was me, only I don't think she could hear me. Well, you do have quite a feminine voice. Mm. You said something about a present for the baby? Oh, right, yeah, I suppose he's doing a whip round. Well, there you go, my feminine voice just saved you from forking out. Yeah, you should pick up my phone more often. <laughs> do you want to give me a dance? Yeah. Hey, I thought you were clearing out the loft this afternoon. Uh, yeah, I am, I am, love. It's just that uh, Kev's had quite a stressful day and needed a pint because Jack, Jack went missing. Yeah. But you found him, didn't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. Right, we'll finish that and then get to it because I'm fed up of tripping up over all your stuff. You have remembered that I'm going to this charity do, aren't you, in a bit? Yeah, yeah, of course I have, and you look lovely. Well, I'm not just saying it just because I've not done the loft, you know. You do, you look very nice. Right, well, don't forget. I won't. Have a nice time, won't you? Right, come on, darts. What about the loft? You heard what she said. She's going to some do we've got all night. So you what? I'm glad I'm not married to you. Yeah, well, the feeling's mutual, even if you do have a feminine voice. <laughs> <laughs> like this new place, then? Yeah, she's got a nice view from her bedroom and her neighbours seem friendly. Makes change from round here, then. Yeah, you should take a look yourself. We could make a weekend of it. Ah, oh, maybe. But after what happened, I think they probably need to put this place behind them for a bit. Yeah. Don't be daft. She'll always want a dad. I hope so. I've got room for Rosie, have they? <laughs> you don't mean that. I mean, she means well enough. It's just sometimes I think she goes out of her way to embarrass me. <laughs> Hello, Metcalf residence. Sally the Mayor speaking. Who? Look, if it's about the flowers on the roundabout, nobody knew they spelt that word. If it hadn't been for the lad's drone. Rosie? Uh, no, she's not here at the moment. I'm a mother, is there? Oh, really, sir? I thought you were the local news. Oh, well, I'll tell her. Well, I'm, I'm very proud, very proud indeed. I mean, what mother wouldn't be? <laughs> Do really? Yeah. It must have been absolutely terrifying. Um, I want to see eyeliner, right? Craig, he's um, got off. See, Rosie's decided not to dress up, man. That well, exactly Craig is subtle, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, probably the idea. With a flame and neck is our Okay, okay. We were like the three musketeers. <laughs> Good state of them. <laughs> Japan. Yeah, I'm like this glamorous assistant on a game show. It's a six month contract, and they want me to fly out today. So you'll be going halfway round the world just to prance around on some TV game show? 
Lucy, how will you manage? I mean, there's the language for a start. Listen, Tokyo is meant to be amazing. Mount Fuji? Yeah, and there's the bullet train. Yeah, they've got them fancy toilets with all them buttons, haven't they? <laughs> like a spa for your nether region. Am I the only one who's not looking at this through rose-tinted spectacles? Look, what your mum's trying to say is... You've got a very good job at the solicitors with prospects. I don't know, do you reckon? Yes, I do, Rosie, and apart from anything else, you've got your family around you here. Rosie, just think about what you've been through. What could have happened with those awful drug dealers? And, and you don't even know these people. Yeah, you're probably right. Oh, it's fine. Mm. It's the least I can do. If it wasn't for Rosie, Olivia could be banged up by now. She's gone off the rails a bit since her mum died. You lost your wife? Yeah, just before Christmas. Oh, dear, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, a uh, massive stroke. Oh, Duncan, that's awful. I'm so sorry. We're taking it one day at a time, you know. It's um, a cliché, but true. Poor Olivia. Poor you. We've started a charity in May's name, actually. Oh, that's lovely. I'm sure she'd be very touched. Yeah, that's nice. To be honest, Sally, I've got an ulterior motive for coming here. Go on. We're going to apply for a grant from your mayoral fund for the charity. I don't suppose... No, it's too cheeky. What? Well, I was wondering if you'd give my application form the once-over, just check them on the right track. Sharon wants a piece of me, and Beth wants... No, I think this weeds really well. That's a relief. You could add a bit more about May and what inspired you and Olivia. Good call. Thank you. And I'd get this in the post pronto. Actually, I'm on a bit of a sticky wicket there. In what way? The deadline was midnight, as in 21 hours ago. No. I fell out of my head. We spent the last three days going through May's things, you know, trips to the charity shop, a few keepsakes for her best friends. Well, you have had a lot to think about. Would you want to get it onto the right desk for me? You know, I know technically it's late. I would if I could, but... No. It's fine. <laughs> Ignore me. Look, why don't you email it to me and I'll see what I can do? I don't want you to feel compromised. Uh... Right, Duncan? It's just off, actually. Angel of the North here is a lifesaver. Well, that's the Angel of the North all over for you. Well, it's a solid application. Thank you. So Wonky Dunky thinks you're an angel, does he? <laughs> I love it when you're jealous. Yeah, well, I love it when you love it. <laughs> come on, my little Angel of the North. I'm going to take you to heaven. Come on, oh, get up. No. Get up. Come on, up, up. <laughs> Hey, I thought you would have wanted... I'm sorry, Duncan. You'll get used to the snail pace of council bureaucracy. I know, I've seen glaciers move quicker. Yes, well, it frustrates me as well, but as soon as there's some news, I'll let you know. All right, then. Bye. Bye. Have you uh, seen much of Seb? Uh, no, not really. Tell you what, love, it's nice having you around the table again. Yeah. I'll go, shall I? Oh, I never stopped to him, dear. You still like him, then? I don't think he feels the same about me. Why is that? No, I think he might have moved on. It's Jack and my dad. Hey, hey Kev, do you want a piece of toast? <laughs> uh, I've not got time, mate. I've got to open up. I just wondered if someone could do me a favour. Oh, on the scrounge again. No, oh, Jack's got football practice later on and I'm up to my eyes at the garage. Working, pal? Yeah, I've got Meryl duties all day. Hmm, I suppose I could do it. Oh, you sure? Yeah. All right. Who's your favourite player, Jack? Messi. I thought you'd be more of a Deli Alley fan. <laughs> Nobody comes close to Tommy Oppington. Oh, hey, Tommy O! Yeah, there's only one Tommy O! There's only one Tommy O! I don't know where you want to go, Will Lunch. You texting Seb? No. How's it going? He's got a date tonight. Who with? Emma. What, Emma from the salon, Emma? Yeah, they're going speed down. All right. So they're not flying off to Paris, they'll get married in the Seychelles then? Not yet. Yes, don't worry, Yasmin. It's all... Yeah. Hello, Jack. 
I guess I'm with this too, will you? It's just my mum. Yeah, that's fine. Faye, are you all right still picking up from school? Yeah, give him his tea, put me in bed. Right. Oh, do we have to go to this speed dial thing tonight? I could yeah. do with an early night for a change. Yeah, well, that's not the end of the world. Well, we should yeah, go, but we don't have to stay late. Oh, the chef's got that in. There'll be that many people yeah. there, Tim. We're not going to be missed. That was Yasmin. She's having kittens because all her friends have cancelled. You two are still coming, aren't you? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, we'll make that restaurant look the busiest that critic's ever seen it. Yeah, they're going to love it. I mean, great food, lovely place, and my brilliant daughter running it. How could they not? Thank you. I don't want to go to school. I don't feel well. Yeah, nice try, Jack. Yasmin, 